having defined the autocorrelation function, it now makes sense to go ahead and define the autocovariance function of the random process. Again, we use the same notation that we did for autocovariance functions of random sequences. We call the autocovariance k. As subscript, we put the random process that we're working with. So since this definition is for x of t, we write xx here. And again, in general, the autocovariance function is a two-dimensional time function. We have to provide times t1 and times t2. And it is equal to the expected value of xc at time t1 times xc at time t2. Different textbooks like to call this the centered random process. So it's not uncommon to see this subscript C notation. But all this really means is take my original random process x of t at this time and subtract off the mean at this time. So this definition is very similar to the autocorrelation function. This part looks very similar. The only difference being is I take off the mean at time t1 off of the random variable at time t1 and I take off the mean at time t2 off of the random variable at time t2. So really what we have here is what's called a centered moment. And this is the definition of our autocovariance function. If you actually multiply this out and do a little bit of algebra, we did that when we dealt with random sequences, you can come up with this equation right here, which is a nice way to relate the mean function, the autocorrelation function, and the autocovariance function to each other. And this is really just kind of a generalization of things that you saw when you dealt with random variables. This looks very much like the variance is equal to the mean squared minus the mean squared. So in the context of random variables, you have equation very analogous to this that lets you, that lets you relate variances and means and second moments. The corollary of that expression when dealing with random processes is this that lets us relate mean functions and autocorrelation functions and autocovariance functions. The next function for random processes that we want to define is what we call the variance function. And the variance function we use sigma squared just like we always do for variance quantities. We put x as a subscript because we're dealing with the random process x. And in general this is a function of time. We can get this variance function by simply evaluating our covariance function along what I call diagonal time. So we evaluate our covariance function at time t and t. So to compute the variance at time t, we simply evaluate our two-dimensional time function at the same times t and t. So by definition, if you actually go back to the previous chart and write out what this means in terms of its fundamental definition, it's as if we're taking x of c at time t times x of c conjugate at time t which by definition is the magnitude squared of x of c at time t. So this quantity right here, remember, the centered random process is the random process minus the mean, which is by definition variance. So that's why this is the variance function, because as a function of time, it tells us what the variance of the random process is. And that should make sense, because remember, at each point in time, we have a random variable, so this quantity is really telling us at any time we want to know what the variance of the random variable is at that time. And then finally we can do something similar for the autocorrelation function. What we have is what we call the power function. So if I evaluate my autocorrelation function along diagonal time again, so the autocorrelation function evaluated at time t and t, by its fundamental definition is the magnitude squared of x of t. So if we go back to how we wrote this down originally in terms of t1 and t2, we said that the autocorrelation function at time t1 and t2 was the expected value of x of t1 times the expected value of x of t2 conjugate. Well, replace t1 with t and replace t2 with t and you end up with x of t times x of t conjugate, which by definition is the magnitude squared of x of t. So this function right here, which is just a function of time, it's a function of one time dimension, just we can plot it as along the axis versus t, it tells us the expected value of the magnitude squared. So really this is a plot of the expected value of the power of the process. Really it's a plot of the power of the process versus time. So that wraps up a few of the uh, fundamental definitions we wanted to make. The power function, 
the variance function, the autocovariance function to go along with the other definitions we had in the previous video. Now let's go ahead and work a specific example. We'll actually have a random process and we'll compute some of these functions for that random process and get a little practice actually working the math for a specific instance of a random process that we'll define in the next video.